Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be factoring a polynomial. If you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like the video, please let me know why in the comment section down below, and let's go ahead and get started. Now, I'd like to talk about a more general strategy here. Uh, these polynomials are, you know, kind of common, uh, and there's a general strategy for them. And I'll just illustrate with this example. Uh, there's another video that I made before that's similar to this one, which I will also include the link in the uh, description. All right, so what are we supposed to do here? We're supposed to factor this. Now, when you look at an expression like this, x to the seven plus x squared plus one, there's no common factor, there's no difference of two squares, there's no cubes, so on and so forth. It's completely different idea. We have seventh power, sometimes we have 11th power, so on and so forth. So what we're supposed to do here is I'll, without explaining why, I'm going to give you the strategy. Maybe later on we can talk more about the general strategy. But in this video, I'd like to illustrate with uh, the specific example. So the strategy basically depends on the following. We have x to the seventh power. You have to think what is three less than seven. Okay, let's establish that first. It is x to the fourth. Now, later on, you're going to realize why this is the case. But let me just go ahead and... Um, proceed. So we're going to use x to the fourth in our expression. That's important. And of course, you can't just make an x to the fourth out of the blue. So you have to add and subtract it, right? Obviously, to keep it balanced. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to use x to the fourth power here. And then we'll proceed with that. And does this method always work? Yep, pretty much almost all the time if you have a polynomial of this kind. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what happens. So I'm going to start with this guy over here, which is the highest power of x, which is x to the seventh. And then from that, I'd like to subtract x to the fourth power. Like I said earlier, there is a reason why we have the difference of three here, okay? It'll be clear in a little bit. And then, of course, if I'm subtracting it, I'm also adding it, which is x to the fourth plus x squared plus one. Now, we've done the first step, which is super important because the rest is kind of easy. And the rest depends on grouping, but we have to do, since there are five terms, we're going to group them a little differently. It's not going to be even. Uh, so we'll group these two together and these three together. And the reason being is if you take out the x to the fourth, you're going to be getting x to the third minus one. Now, this is the very reason why we look for uh, three less than seven, because when you factor out the smaller power, you'll always get x cubed minus one. In some cases, you may be getting x cubed plus one. Okay, cool. Now you might be asking like, what does this have to do with x to the fourth, right? Is x to the fourth plus x squared plus one divisible by x cubed minus one? The answer is no, but they are both divisible by the same thing. So our goal is after we do the split with the, the difference of three, we get two, pe uh, two pieces and then those two pieces will have a common factor, but we have to find it. Now, if you think about it, if you factor x cubed minus one, it can be factored as x minus one times x squared plus x plus one, right? This is the difference of two cubes. You must know the formula, hopefully. If not, that's the formula, you know, uh, and you just factor it like that. But the second piece was not factored yet. Why? Because I don't know how to factor it. Let's say, pretend I don't know how to do it. I do, but uh, the idea is the following. We're gonna look for a common factor. So we have two pieces. Let me illustrate them one, illustrate them one more time. These two pieces, and I gotta find the common factor. Well, since the first piece was already factored and can't be factored anymore, uh, because x squared plus x plus one, as you know, can't be factored. X minus one is prime, uh, and x to the fourth is also, I mean, it can be factored into x squared times x squared, but that doesn't really help much. If you look at the second expression, x to the fourth plus x squared plus one, you must be thinking, okay, since these two expressions have a common factor, then that common factor cannot, cannot be x to the fourth. Why? Because x to the fourth doesn't divide the second expression. Can it be x minus one? Well, let's test it out. Does the second polynomial, or is the second polynomial divisible by x minus one? How can you check? You can replace x with one. If you replace x with one, you get one plus one plus one, which is equal to not zero, right? So. The second polynomial obviously is not divisible by x minus one either. So it can't be those. That means it has to be x squared plus x plus one. In other words, 
you know now that x to the fourth plus x squared plus one is divisible by x squared plus x plus one. Now, if you don't know what the, the other factor is to make it um, possible, then you could do long division, right? You could go ahead and divide. That's one way to approach it. So you could go ahead and take this x squared plus x plus one and just divide it into x to the fourth plus x squared plus one. And then from here, you should be basically getting the quotient, right? And the quotient is gonna be the other factor. But this is kind of like a long way to do it. And definitely you can do it that way. I mean, it's gonna work. So I'm gonna leave that to you as an exercise and I'm gonna proceed with my method here. So my method depends on completing the square. And how does that work? Well, x to the fourth plus x squared plus one is factorable because if I just go ahead and take this and add x squared to it and then subtract x squared from it, then this piece becomes factorable. Why? Because it becomes, let's see what happens. And I'm kind of writing this as like connecting them. I don't like that. x minus one, x squared plus x plus one. And then this piece here is x to the fourth plus two x squared plus one minus x squared. Does that make sense? So here, what happens is, you know, I have a perfect square. How, is that, how does that work? Well, x to the fourth minus, I have to make it a little smaller. Okay, here we go. x to the fourth times x minus one times x squared plus x plus one. And then plus, okay, this I can write as x squared plus one quantity squared minus x squared. Now you see the difference of two squares? Awesome. And this is where we get our factor from. So let's see, we have x to the fourth times x minus one times x squared plus x plus one. And then from here I get x squared plus one plus x. That's gonna be one of the factors from difference of two squares. The other factor is gonna be x squared plus one minus x. Of course, we can arrange this, but that's not the point. The point is we get a nice expression from here, which is this one and this one. That is a common factor. See that? Okay, awesome. So what I can do now is I can actually take out x squared plus x plus one, which is a common factor. So remember, I was telling you all this time that x to the fourth plus x squared plus one is divisible by x squared plus x plus one. This is what it is. So if you did the long division, maybe it would take about, about the same time and you would get the answer. I don't know. You can try it. So uh, this one is gonna give me x to the fourth times x, which is x to the fifth minus x, okay? Then the second part is gonna give me x squared plus one minus x. Okay, awesome. What am I gonna do next? Well, the negative x and the negative x, they don't cancel out, right? So we're gonna have to just uh, stick with that and let's go ahead and arrange this a little bit more and then we'll get our answer. X squared plus X plus one. Again, this is the critical part that we always have this kind of factor times we have here X to the fifth, okay? And then we have plus X squared, right? And then we have minus two X plus one. Now you might be thinking, is this factorable in any way? Well, it's kind of like X to the fifth plus x minus one quantity squared. But, uh, you know, having a sum like that is not really gonna help us uh, because, oh, we made a mistake here. I just realized when I distributed x to the fifth minus x to the fourth, there you go. Okay, this is why it doesn't simplify like that. Okay, cool. I'm like, there's something wrong with this. Okay, here we go. All right, so this is gonna be x to the fifth minus x to the fourth. And then the second piece is gonna be x squared plus one minus x. Okay, I think we're good. Then from this point on, it's going to be x to the fifth minus x to the fourth plus x squared minus x plus one. Now, if you don't believe that this is the right answer, you can just go ahead and distribute and you're going to notice that a lot of terms are gonna cancel out, which is gonna give us the answer at the end. For example, if you multiply x squared by x to the fourth, you get x to the sixth, negative x to the sixth and positive x to the sixth, so the x to the sixth cancel out. Okay, so this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another video at the right at the same time. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.